Trump effect. The president has officially labeled himself as a designation that some of his fiercest critics have used against him. You know, they have a word. It sort of became old fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. National. Nothing. Use that word. Use that word. Use that word. The president says he is a nationalist. He followed that with a rebuke of, quote, radical Democrats who want to restore the rule of power-hungry globalists. The president described a globalist as someone who puts other nations' interests ahead of the United States. President Trump further embraced the characterization on this day. I'm proud of our country, and I am a nationalist. It's a word that hasn't been used too much. Some people use it, but I'm very proud. I think it should be brought back. I'm somebody that wants to help other countries of the world, but I also have to take care. We have to take care of our country. So in that sense, I am absolutely a nationalist, and I'm proud of it. Meanwhile, the president has promised to send troops to the U.S. border to stop a group of over 7,000 Central American migrants who are trying to travel through Mexico and come to the United States. The president says that the so-called caravan might be funded by the Democrats. Let's bring in Vino Varghese, a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, and Chris Prudhomme, a Republican strategist. And Chris, do you believe the Democrats are funding this caravan, which is still 1,100 miles away from the U.S. border? So I'm not certain on whether they're funding it or not, but look, this caravan must be stopped. We're a nation of laws, and we have to continue to be a nation of laws. We have to set an example instead of standard. We cannot allow individuals from, from any country have that to just roll in inside of our country. Uh, and, and they are people who obviously need help. They're in, they are in need of assistance. Today, uh, they obviously were assisted. They gave them free medical, excuse me, Mexico gave them free uh, medical attention, aid, food. And I know we are working with people to do all we can at the same time. There are also individuals who are not good people who are part of these caravans who are being uh, utilized. How, how, how do, Chris, how do, we, how do we know that? I mean, I know that President Trump has said there are well, people from the Middle East and there are people who are, quote, criminals. Yeah. But, I mean, we've heard from a lot of analysts who say, look, this is not how MS-13 would come to the United States. They wouldn't join a caravan. We have to walk uh, 1,100 miles over 45 days just to get to the United States from where they are now. They wouldn't go through 95-degree weather to try to do this. How do we know that there are, quote, bad people or criminals that are part of this? Well, also, you have, look, you actually have a Homeland Security Advisors and Border Patrol who actually spoke about in regards to a cartel, uh, those individuals who are, are, who are trying to utilize individuals in the caravan to cut off certain points so they can avoid the Border Patrol. So we're forced, because when you have Border Patrol versus a National Guard or military coming in, coming in, there's certain things that you can and cannot do. And these guys know that. So the reality is there is no hard actual uh, fact of who specifically is part of MS-13 or who is not part of MS-13. These are all uh, uh, presumptions based on, on statistics and, and based on, on other situations. But of course, everybody in that caravan uh, uh, obviously is not good people. There are some who obviously need help and they are, are, are running uh, to become an, obviously in a good situation here in America. But there are also individuals who are there in the caravan who are not here for good reasons. The new to you on this, I mean, just like where there's no evidence that there are criminals, MS-13 or Middle Easterners are part of this caravan, we also don't have definitive proof that everybody in this caravan is simply trying to escape violence and poverty in Guatemala and Honduras and has a noble purposes for trying to say that they want to get asylum in the United States. I mean, I think that's correct. And every, every you know, everything has to be evaluated. And that's why there are those... Uh, camps or whatever they're called or holding centers, detention centers for people to be vetted. And that's what they're going to do. So, you know, I, I think, look, this goes back to Trump's speech and, and talking about him being a nationalist. You know, the Trump isn't the commander in chief of the United States. He's the great divider in chief. And he's using his rhetoric to divide us. And the issue and saying these people from the caravan are Mexican or Arab or, you know, origin, and again, further turns to divide us as he's holding a rally for Ted Cruz, trying to gather support and using words that he knows are going to inflame and hopefully uh, rev up his base. Well, in Venu, a, a lot of Americans, a lot of historians would say, yes, nationalism is associated with Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany with Mussolini. But why not accept the president's word that he doesn't make that association, that he's never heard of that association with nationalism before? I, I, I think the president is, is very smart. 
Um, a lot of people don't give him credit. He knows what he's doing. Look, he could have used a different word. He could have said, I'm a patriot. He chose not to use the word patriotic. He said, he could have said, I'm a patriot. Remember, this is the same president who yep. defended Vladimir Putin by saying, we're not a great, you know, we've had problems. We've done terrible things. So, you know, he's he's picking and choosing and, and he, you know, he, he's he's doing a, a spin dance. You know, uh, he's like a whirling dervish. You know, one day he'll say one thing, the other day well, he'll well, say well, another thing. Well, Chris, can you understand well, why pay, a lot pay. of people, historians and otherwise, and people who follow politics might be anxious or nervous when the president refers to himself repeatedly as a nationalist? Look, when you look up the word uh, nationalism, it, it indicates uh, it, it indicates independence of independence of political independence of, of a country or nation. And look, uh, President Trump is talking about. He said it today, quote unquote. Uh, he's a nationalist from a trade standpoint and from loving our country. Uh, he also talked about earlier, uh, you have Germany uh, who, who pays uh, sorry, GDP 1 percent, and we pay 4.5 percent of NATO's GDP. That's not uh, simply not accurate. Uh, that's just not right. Excuse me. And when you, when you look at all the issues we have, you look at uh, losing $150 billion in trade last year, uh, and you look at our situation with NATO, you look at our, everything going on with our barriers, uh, uh, like he said, he, put, he said I'm with President Xi. You know, they have a lot of individuals who are not not letting us uh, bring in uh, utilizing plants, medical equipment. It's time that we stop and it's time we look at everything, we evaluate and say it's time to put America first. And that's all he's simply saying is let's put America first. But like I said, when you have Germany paying 1%, we're paying 4.5% GDP. Something is wrong with that picture. We, 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 it's time that we stop being the world police and not being reimbursed for it. We have to stop that. And he's the first president to actually uh, combat these world leaders and say, look, guys, uh, we want to help. We want to be there for you. Well, actually, we to be, be fair, we President, Obama also, well, President Obama also put NATO countries on notice that they needed to contribute more. But, Venu, to Chris's point, shouldn't we just chalk this up as President Trump is simply being a nationalist in terms of trade, that it's only economic issues? This is what the president is talking about. Look, the president uh, has his words and he chooses his words um, carefully. Uh, it may not seem carefully, but he knows what he's saying. He knows that he's, you know, at a rally and he's using these words. And look what he said. He said, "This is a word that's fallen out of out of out of favor, but I'm going to use it." So he he knows specifically what he's doing. He's he's taking shots at at liberals. As I said, he is the divider in chief. No president has ever. But but but, 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 but you mentioned had. but you mentioned divide. But you mentioned divider in chief, and so I want to go back to something you said earlier. A uh, point. Uh, look. When you have uh, people like Congressman Maxine Waters, who's, who's telling people, when you see individuals at the restaurants, at gas stations, right. at Chris, malls, that's confront a great point, them and tell them, not, you are not Chris, welcome. that's a great point, and that, and we're, that's not debating, said, we're not debating Congressman, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. We're talking about President Trump. But we will have that debate, I, I promise, over the next couple of weeks. Chris Prudhomme and Vino Varghese, thank you both so much for coming on. We appreciate it.